Yeah, thank you very much for the kind invitation. Yeah, I wish I could be there. Yeah, I noticed there are a lot of people uh, there and I wish I could meet you in person. But yeah, anyway, thank you very much for inviting me. And it's really great my honor to be here to present our works about the FISM model for inverse problem, especially for medical applications. And in fact, actually, this is, I have a, a little bit of discussion of this one because I would say this is more like a, my personal perspective or my personal journey to understanding of this diffusion model for inverse problems. So it may be a little bit different from the conventional way of understanding diffusion model, so, but it may be more intuitive, I believe. Yeah. So my journey starts with uh, uh, this famous Yan Nakun's cake analogy. Perhaps you may know about this. So Yan Nakun. Uh, he actually mentioned in several keynote speakers uh, speeches uh, uh, show this kind of picture and mentions about uh, the machine learning in general and describe and compare this one as a cake. So he mentions that, for example, the cherries on the cake, uh, the reinforcement learning in the machine learning can be compared as a cherry. And supervised learning at the time, the supervised learning was the majority of the machine learning techniques. It's just like a portion of icing on the cake. The majority of cake, he mentions, need to be solved in an unsupervised way or maybe self-supervised way. In fact, his vision, his, uh, his vision was correct, and nowadays you can see the uh, large success of self-supervised learning and unsupervised learning in machine learning uh, problems. In fact, actually, in retrospect, one of the actual earliest uh, self-supervised learning approaches for inverse problem is self-supervised denoting for the noise to score, uh, noise to noise. For example, in the noise to noise, they actually try to actually design a, a neural network for the denoising purpose without any clean images. But instead, they actually have two versions or multiple versions of a noise image from the same online clean images and try to estimate another noise image from the input noise image. And you train in such a way that you put original images, you can see that cleaner images as you can see here. Yeah, this is very nice. However, the problem of this one is it's very difficult to use this one in the real inverse problem because it's very difficult to obtain multiple noise images from the same underlying images. So there are a lot of actually advances in this field and to try to actually use one single noise image for the denoising. For example, when a noise to self or noise to board, they try to estimate the mass part of the images from the surrounding. Once you train your network in such a way, then you put the original noise image as a whole, then you can actually have a clean image. It looks like a quite heuristic approach, and it doesn't look like a quite linked to the previous one. In fact, another approach, which appears a little bit more rigorous, is also looks very different. This is actually based on the uh, Stein unsupervised risk estimation of sure. Here, the author tried to actually design an autoencoder from the noise image to the noise target. But if you just minimize this autoencoder loss, you end up with a trivial identity mapping. So to avoid that one, they add, add a diversity-based penalty from the sure cost function. And then, actually, they demonstrate that if you solve this uh, minimization problem, and the resulting F set provides uh, the noise result. So in fact, if you see this uh, various approach, it looks like a very different and also similarly unconnected to each other. So our goal was originally was try to find some kinds of unspo uh, the ununified understanding of this kind of problem. In fact, actually, there is a very interesting discovery and rediscovery of, from the literature from early statistics. In fact, this is so-called the Tweedis formula for the exponential family distribution. So. Uh, so Tweedy's formula uh, starts from the uh, uh, canonical decomposition of the property density function for exponential family distribution. For example, P, Y given eta is, can be decomposed like this. Here, eta is a known param uh, parameter, underlying parameter, and T is a sufficient statistics. Now, using the base rule, you can actually obtain the posterior density function, which looks like, a, again, another exponential family distribution. But now there is an interesting term lambda here. Okay, from here, now one of the important contribution from the original to this formula and our rediscovery in the NUIPS 2021 is actually to this formula gives a closed form solution for the poster mean. In fact, actually the closed form solution for the poster mean of the parameter eta, uh, eta hat 
should satisfy this kind of equality. Here, this t dot is the gradient of the sufficient uh, uh, statistics. And now that you can actually see some interesting term appear here, this is, uh, this is actually the score function. Okay, in fact, actually, this can be solved in various uh, exponential family distribution. And in our 2021 Muniz paper, we, dem uh, sorry, we demonstrate that for all kinds of uh, noise model, we can actually show that without any clean image, you can obtain the clean, uh, clean image estimation, posterior mean estimation from the noise image by using this kind of formula. So here for the Gaussian cases, we have a y plus score function with the, some scale version. And this is for, uh, for the fossil noise model, and this is for the gamma noise, and this is Baroni distribution and exponential family distribution. Now, one thing you can see that as long as you can compute the score function, then optimal denoising in the posterior mean sense can be achieved by the previous formula. That's very interesting observation. In fact, you can actually see this very interesting decomposition of the uh, self supervised denoising problem. Now here, for a given y, we have a pre-trained neural network to estimate the score function. And then from the score function, you have the downstream test, which in this case is based on the deterministic Twidis formula. From here, you can obtain the clean index. So now we, have a, we can actually see that over and over again, this kinds of decomposition of the pre-training and then sampling in the diffusion model. In fact, this is more like a universal theme in the current uh, self-supervised learning, even in the language model as well. So now the question here is, now this is actually based on total uh, uh, derivation from totally different kinds of rules from the statistics. So is any kind of relationship to the existing self-supervised denoising approaches? In fact, there's a very important uh, relationship. Before we talk about that one, we need to actually talk about the score function because if you see that in the previous noise to score formula, all you need to know is a score function, a score function. So score function is in fact for a given probability dense function. Here the uh, dark one is actually the point. Sorry, yeah, there is a shitty working. So there is a probability dense function. In fact, this score function is a gradient of law. It's like a vector direction pointing toward the peak point of the probability dense function. So, in fact, this is very important. Uh, this is very useful to find the peak point of the density. So it has been quite uh, extensively studied in the classical statistic literature. For example, in the one of the earliest work for the score function estimation is actually called the denoising autoencoder, which appears in 2014 by Alan and he's actually the students of Benjil. Uh, and their paper, they actually show that we actually train the denoising autoencoder like this, F zeta. Now, the meaning of the denoising autoencoder is we have a signal Y and adding additive noises uh, with the various noise level and then train the neural network such that it can estimate the original image. Once you train in this denoising autoencoder, what they demonstrate is that this uh, trained autoencoder can be actually uh, can be actually described as y plus sigma score function like this. That means score function can be obtained by solving this equation. And in fact, you can actually see two very important observations here. The first thing is this formula to estimate the autoencoder is, is exactly the same as the Tweedis formula for the Gaussian uh, noise cases. This is the Tweedis formula for Gaussian denoising problem. And another discovery you can actually see here is now here, this denoising autoencoder is very similar to the noise to X or noise to board or noise to noise or something like that because the main idea of, of noise to X, what we call noise to X, is basically altering the input or output and then try to estimate, uh, try to try uh, neural network to restore the original one or maybe to, uh, to remove the noises, right? So in fact, this cost function is nothing but the noise to X type of score from uh, the cost function. So that means now you can actually understand why these kinds of noise to X works for the self-supervised denoising problem. The reason is, in fact, they try, they will try, try to uh, train a uh, denoising autoencoder, and then if you estimate the denoising autoencoder, it's nothing but the Tweedis formula for the Gaussian 
uh, noise problem. So in fact, the, the score for the denoise uh, Gaussian noise problem is closely linked to the noise to act. And in fact, denoise mode to encoder training is very simple. You can actually see that this will be actually used again and again in the diffusion model training. Now, for given any kind of clean image, you are adding noises and try to remove the noises. Adding noises in the various level and try to remove the noises. This is, a, by the way, this is not a supervised training. This is self-supervised learning because basically you can use any kinds of picture from the internet, for example, and just add noise in the various level, and then just train the neural net to, to remove it. And once you train it, then you can do a lot of interesting for the ge generative model, or denoising, or for the inverse problem, as you can see in this uh, talk. Okay? And also, another important relationship is actually with respect to shear. So shear, host function, for the self-supervised denoising was given in this way. This is a divergence penalty here. Now, f zeta is actually the noise estimate, uh, denoising functions. Now, if you actually use the, actually the residual form of this f zeta, and r zeta is now represented as a score function here, and plugging this one expression to here, and then divide by sigma 4, you can actually see this cost function is equivalent to this cost function at the bottom. In fact, this cost function at the bottom is very well known cost function in the score function as uh, score matching literatures. This is known as implicit score matching cost. So that means, based on the uh, on this understanding, the reason that sure based denoising approach works is because it's, it's actually nothing but the score function estimation. And once you estimate the score function, in fact, the f zeta is basically the denoising formula denoising Tweedy's formula for the Gaussian neural scale. So based on this understanding, now you can see that previous denoising formula for the noise to X, noise ball, and sure uh, nothing but the score-based approaches. So, they, so in fact, actually, uh, you can actually see that in terms of denoising purposes, by understanding those kind of things, you can actually do a lot of improvement compared to the standard self-supervised uh, approaches like a sure, or like a noise to, uh, uh, noise to noise to noise or noise to cell, and this one is noise to cell. For the Gaussian, Poisson, especially for example, Ga uh, Poisson and gamma noise, you can actually see the significant gain, as you can see here, in terms of PSNL and also textures. Yeah, so far, actually, I discussed about a little bit of different things, not about the diffusion model, but about the denoising problem. So now, we are getting close to the diffusion model now. So the question is, now, is there any way to generalize this one beyond the one-step denoising problem? In fact, this is actually coming from the understanding of what's going on in the noise-to-score algorithm from a, a, from a score map perspective. Here, noise-to-noise, we are given a, a noise image Y, which will, is away, somewhere away from the peak point of here. And now we are adding the, notice, uh, the gradient direc uh, direction of the lobe. This is based on the scope function. This gives a vector direction, which is pointing toward to the peak point. So by doing that, you can actually have a much more clean image. Okay? Now, if this Y is close to the peak point, we have a very good de uh, denoising result. Then what if, if we start from very far? So that means very, very noise, and even complete Gaussian noise. In fact, the way to achieve this one is following this vector direction. In fact, by applying this one iteratively, we can actually uh, uh, we can actually denoise a lot of images. And if we start with the complete noises, this is basically the generative model. In fact, this is a diffusion model. Yeah, most specifically, the one of the uh, one of the, actually the typical method for the diffusion model is so-called the lambda in that score-based lambda uh, dynamics, or SLMD, or sometimes called various variance exploiting parameterization. Here, this is basically the, exactly the same as I just described. Now, for a given sample x, now we are following along the vector direction along the score function, and add some noises here. And by iterating this one, you can actually achieve uh, the peak point, and if you start from this uh, complete Gaussian noises, it become a generative mode. 
However, there is another, more, perhaps more popular approach, which is known as a denosing diffusion processing model, or DDPM. It actually starts with a completely different kinds of perspective, Markov chain. For example, here the author started with the Markov chain by adding Gaussian noises at each step, starting from max zero. Now, by adding Gaussian noises, is we can actually accurately describe this uh, transition as a Gaussian no uh, probability function like this. If you add more and more, then you can become a complete Gaussian noise. Now, the goal is now how to re uh, remove this noise one step by one step. So that means you need to estimate the noise level between each step. However, it turns out that direct estimation of the noise, uh, noise is, is difficult, it's not possible, but you can actually minimize the variance lower bound. In fact, the step size is small, then those kinds of transition probability is uh, approximated by the, uh, another uh, 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 Gaussian noise transition like this. And now, from here, you can actually estimate the cleaner image part, mu set. And based on this formulation, the DDPM training and sampling formulation is given in this way. Now, at the pre-training stages here, now you are trying to uh, train the neural network E zeta that estimate the noise level. From what? So X0 is a clean image, and you are now attenuating this one. In fact, the reason that this is called the various preserving is actually because we are attenuating this and adding noises by preserving the variance. So from this signal, noise signal, this is fourth part, and then you try to estimate the epsilon noise part. Once you train in this way, now during the sampling procedure, from starting from at each step, now you are just removing the noise component, scale version of the noise component, and then scale it and adding some noises, and you iterate this one more, uh, several times. In fact, this kinds of decomposition is maybe remind us very similar, uh, remind us noise to score decomposition, right? Here, the first step was score function estimation. In fact, this kind of thing is uh, noise estimation is actually is nothing but the score function estimation for the scale. If you scale this one, uh, uh, instead of having this, you can actually have a, a scale version of this, and then this is actually basically the score function estimation part. This is equivalent. So that means this kind of decomposition is very similar to the noise to score to estimate the score function at the beginning. And then once you train the score function, then in the uh, noise to score cases, we actually have a, a downstream test using the deterministic formula. But now in this DDPM or score based approaches, instead of applying one time, we are doing the sampling along the iterative way, uh, along the iterative manner. Then by doing that one, you can actually have the training, uh, you can actually generate the sample, with what you want. Okay? In fact, this kind of approach has been very successful, as you know, maybe in the previous talk, actually, Jam mentions about this kind of success in the tutorial. But for example, earlier version of the papers, they already demonstrate they are much better than Steigan 2 other. And also, the reason, perhaps the main reason that uh, diffusion model has become popular is because text guide image generation, like a stable diffusion, uh, and etc. So from the text description, you can generate the photorealistic images like this. However, this is about the generative part. So the question is, yeah, I'm a person working on the inverse problem. So the question is, how to use this one for the inverse problem? In fact, in order to understand this kind of uh, uh, application of the diffusion model for inverse problem, we can actually go back to the basic fundament, uh, basic 101 of the inverse problem. For example, inverse problem has actually uh, have an unknown image x you want to estimate, and then measurement y, but usually y is actually collected from the imaging system matrix A, or it may be a nonlinear mapping, and collected with the noise. And our goal is to estimate this x from the y measurement. This is actually universal for microscopy, MRI, CT, and optics, and etc. And most of the computational imaging problems. Okay, now here you can see that now there's some kind of conditioning. So we are from x to y. So x and measurement is not uh, is direct is conditioned on the image x and this kind of imaging system. So that means this is not a 
unconditional sampling, but you need to think about the conditional sampling. So you need to actually go back to understand the basics about conditional diffusion from the beginning. So one of the earliest work of the conditional diffusion starts with the SI3 from the Google brain. Here, actually, they demonstrate a very, um, uh, un, a very impressive image quality from the input image like this to the, uh, to the very clean images in the SS3 output, which is very compared to the reference images. Okay? So how did they train? Now, this is the algorithm. Now, last part is a free training part for the score function estimation. In this case, FSET is a score function, uh, not a score function. This is scale version score function. And in the DDPN context, this is a noisy estimation. And algorithm 2 is for the inference data. This is basically the sampling, for the reverse sampling. OK, now this is exactly the same, appears exactly the same as the original DDPN formula, except one important difference. This is x here. Now here, y0 is a clean image. OK, in this case, it will be high resolution image. What is x? X in this SS3 cases, this is actually uh, this kind of blurry measurement. This is Y and this is blurry measurement X. So now, given two channels as an input for the score function estimation, and now you can estimate, the, uh, you can train the neural network. So that means, yeah, even though it works, there's a very fundamental limitation. The thing is, actually, as I mentioned before, the reason we try, we are interested in diffusion model is it's, cap it's very important link to the self-supervised learning and also its capability of uh, solving the inverse problem without any kind of reference data. Right? But here, you can see here that in order to train this scope for a diffusion model, you need to actually have a uh, input and a clean output matched pair. So in fact, this is a supervised version of the diffusion model. So this is not good for the inverse problem perspective. So one of the actually the first work to address this problem is actually called the ILBA, I'm sorry, ILBA algorithm, which appears in the 2020 Nike year. So they are actually the main idea is they train the score function in con unconditional manner without any kinds of pair data. And then during the inference phase, they add some condition. So in fact, their condition is very simple. So here they are interested in the uh, 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 super resolution problem. And now they actually alternate between denoting step from the uh, reverse stochastic quantification or DDPM, and then alternate with the data consistent term. What is this data consistent term here? Now, in this case, you actually increase the resolution of your uh, small images, and then you mix that one with this denoise sample together. And by enforcing this kind of thing and mixing them together during the intermediate sample, you can guide the signal to similar to the uh, to uh, to the original input image, but reserve the resolutions. That's main idea. So then, this is actually give some make you give you some kind of clue to solve the inverse problem because super resolution problem, uh, the convolution problem is one of the typical, one of the important inverse problem. So then, how can I actually generalize this one for more general inverse problem? Uh, for example, let's think about y minus ax. A is a imaging system functions and x is a known image you want to estimate. We are interested in inverse problem, we are interested in solving this problem, but if we directly solve this problem, there are a lot of infinite many solutions, so you usually need to actually give some kind of uh, prior information. So here, in our paper in 2020 in the media, uh, medical image analysis, we actually tried to solve this, uh, apply this scope uh, diffusion model for the X-ray MRI problem. But now, actually inspired from the ILBA, we actually, divide, we actually provide a generalized version of the uh, data consistent step here. So this denoting step is exactly the same as reverse diffusion using, for example, DDPM or like a Langevin dynamy, and then alternated with the data consistent. Where this data consistent come? This is actually one step gradient of this cost function. 
So that means by automating this uh, step function and then with, with this data consistency together, we can actually solve this problem. In fact, uh, the, in terms of algorithm implementation, this was actually our original implementation using the correct, the correct uh, uh, terms. So here, we start with the complete Gaussian noises, and now we have a measurement from the accelerated MRI, if actually you use a direct inverse Fourier transform, in the image domain, you can see a lot of aliasing artifacts. So, but this is equivalent from the downsampling case space data, so we directly add this information. So we are now doing the reverse sampling, and then doing the reverse single step on conditional denoising using the reverse sampling, and then adding the data consistency by injecting the, uh, this information a case space information from Y. And then alternating that one, you can actually obtain images. You can actually do this one easily for the parallel MRI problem with the multiple core. So we, yeah, one of the important here, thing here is now, most of the MRI applications in the compressed sensing MRI, you usually require a case space data and matches case space da uh, data as and the clean images. But now, our diffusion model is only trained with the uh, DICOM file only, without any complex data at all. But still, and no case based data is necessary for the diffusion model training at all. But you can actually do the inference in parallel imaging and the single core imaging as well. Now, this is actually one of the first results we actually demonstrated two years ago. So, here, this is actually the sampling pattern here. <coughs> this is one dimensional sampling pattern. If you actually use uh, your favorite total variation penalty, like a compressed sensing, now you can actually construct the image, but still we may see this kind of blurry artifacts, as you can see here. And also this is the uh, error map, as you can see here. Now if we use a unit type approach, which was actually when we were first uh, pro uh, proposed, it was a very breakthrough compared to the compressed sensing, but still with this kind of acceleration factors, we have very blurry construction. And do do lab is actually based on the gain type of uh, penalty term to improve the resolution. But now this is a diffusion model. As you can see here, now you can clearly improve the order detail of this one and compared to other model and the error is very, very small even with this highly accelerated factor. Furthermore, one of the most important uh, property is the generalizing capability. Now here our diffusion model is a trend with the knee data only, but it can be used for the brain image reconstruction or ankle image reconstruction or spines as you can see here, and significantly output from other methods. And of course, if, if it, because of the improved performance, if you actually directly apply it, this with the computer aided diagnostic tools, you can actually have much more better accuracy compared to other deep learning approaches or compressed sensing approaches. In fact, one of the, another very important discovery was uncertainty quantification. Yeah, I didn't realize this was important, but when I give the talk, it, most of doctors were very, very uh, happy to see this result. So that means this is a very important property of diffusion mode. What I mean by uncertainty quantification is, now if I actually start with this kind of uniform acceleration factor of two, or uniform acceleration factor of four, six, and eight, or something like that. And now, you can see, do the reconstruction, maybe see that some of the areas are much more like uh, highly uh, uncertain to compare to other areas, right? So that means by actually, by generating multiple samples, because the diffusion model is actually a stochastic sample, you can generate a multiple reconstruction and calculating variance that gives this kind of uncertainty. By showing this one, you can actually see which part is more uncertain, and you can actually see this one as a guidance for the diagonal approach as well. Yeah, that is actually the work vector we have done like uh, earlier, but now the questions we have done recently is actually how to further improve this kind of performance. Now, in order to understand the way to improve this diffusion model for inverse problem, now we need to actually go back to the basic statistics again. It's actually concentration of the processing matter. So here, let's think about the Gaussian, independent Gaussian noise with the uh, zero mean and sigma values, right? Each one is centered at along the zero. But however, if you actually uh, make this one as high dimensional vector, independent vector and dimensional vector, 
And because of the law of large number, the sample is not centered at the zero, uh, but it is centered along the hypersphere, which is distance with the sigma root n. So this is actually the Gaussian set theorem. So this is looks like a shell. Okay, now we can actually see, start to see a very interesting thing. I, th I remember Jem mentioned about this one uh, in, in the last part of his previous talk. Now here, let's think about, yeah, we are given image manifold X, okay? Now, now if we actually add a node for the images, then what happened in the progressive distribution and, and the data manifold? It turns out that adding noise in Gaussian noise in the probability space is convolution. So that means we are now need to convolve with the probability dense function here with this kind of Gaussian cell. So that means we have a now split it, it becomes a split it and become a hypersolidity. So now we can actually see that the way actually the distribution goes on in the diffusion model by adding Gaussian noise, it looks like this. You start with the Gaussian uh, data manifold, probability density from um, uh, the data distribution along M. Now by adding noise, now you become a hypersphere uh, with the specific distances like that. And then the 4D pigeon is actually jumping from one cell to another one. And reverse diffusion is like this. In fact, what it goes furthermore, then you start to see that this is actually going from starting from this kinds of data manifold. Now if you add more and more noises, it becomes completely sphere. So in, in fact, this is complete Gaussian cell. Okay? Yeah, maybe perhaps you may see that this is very similar to the wave propagation. In fact, this is. The reason is, now if you see here, we are basically having an each Gaussian, the distribution from the Gaussian cell theorem is like a sphere. So that means this is basically the Huygens principle in the probability spaces. So basically Huygens principle, uh, yeah, that's right, okay. So now based on that one, you can actually see how to actually optimize this algorithm furthermore. Okay, now here, now let's think about the general inverse problem, linear phase and nonlinear and neural network phase approach. Okay? Now if you actually think about diffusion uh, inverse problem as a posterior sampling, uh, poster, uh, poster mean estimation, you can actually think about the posterior sampling. So now given y measurement here, now if we suppose we have a, we can generate a scope function uh, for the given y, then from the base loop you end up with this kind of thing. So maybe one of the naive way of the applying this one is actually poster sampling using this kind of thing. However, the problem here is now this part. Because actually, now we need to actually estimate this original score function and the other one. But the problem is now our in, in the transition diagram, the y is directly related to the clean image x, but xt is a uh, four diffuse modes, so there's no direct path. So that means the estimating the density function, uh, score function given at xt, uh, I'm sorry, the likelihood function given xt is intractable. In fact, if you think about this y xt, then what happened? This is actually you need to actually calculate the integral equation like this. And using the uh, Markov chain, you can actually see that this is only depending on x0. And this becomes uh, mean of py given x0. This is a poster mean of the py given x0. However, this is actually not tractable to compute. So then how to actually approximate this one? So perhaps one of the easiest things we can actually think about is if we can push the expectation of the inside of here. This looks like a similar to the Jensen's inequality, but this is not because this is not a convex or concave function either. But we'll talk about this one later. But if we actually put this one in this way, then what is this? Poster mean value. In fact, this poster mean estimating x0 is can be computed in a cross form solution using the treatise formula we discussed before. So that means we are now uh, interchanging this one as a denoise version with the treatise formula here. So that means now you need to actually quantify the error of this approximation. So in fact, what I demonstrated in our iClear paper this year is now for a given measurement of yt and you approximate this one as a treatise formula x0, then is 
uh, in fact, this is actually known as the difference is known as the Jensen bound. Whether this is a convex or concave or whatever, this is always bounded. And then the bound here has a very interesting term here. Now, especially this term here. This sigma is actually the measurement noise. This is not a diffusion noise model. This is a measurement noise for the Gaussian cases. Now, if you see here, if your noise level is very high or noise level is very small, then in that case, the Jensen game is very small. So this kind of approximation using the Tweedy's formula is quite accurate in that case. So our algorithm called the diffusion poster sampling is from those kinds of observations. Here, from this one, you actually place this one using Tweedy's formula. And then you actually place this one as a score function estimation here. And for the Gaussian cases, this part is become this one. Now here, you need to be careful, this x0 is not a deterministic one, this is a function of st, so you need to actually calculate the gradient uh, with respect to this one, using, uh, uh, using uh, chain rules. But you can easily calculate it using the uh, PyTorch. So then what happens is, now for a given xt, now using the Tweedy's formula, you estimate x0. Now, for a given measurement y and a x0, you now find the residual and the back propagating this, I'm sorry. And then you're adding this component during the uh, sampling procedure. Then what, uh, what's the actual relationship with this one with the geometry we discussed before? In fact, the discovery is actually, the, we actually demonstrated in our newest paper, and this is archive, uh, this is actually the, not archive, the iClear paper. So we demonstrate this following. Now what happens is, if you calculate this data fidelity term with respect to xt, and this is Tweedy's formula, it turns out this gradient direction is actually the parallel to the uh, uh, tangent of the clean manifold here. So that means what happens is, during the DPS sampling, now for Tweedy's formula is basically projecting to the clean manifold. You can actually show that, even though I didn't describe it here. And then the alternating, uh, uh, and then you do the sampling along this uh, parallel uh, tangential direction, but you are adding them together, so basically we are being the vector direction along these two. And then this is actually applied to the data, uh, data consistent sum. So basically we are trying to actually approach this, this data uh, fidelity term by satisfying this kind of data, the, the share, uh, the, uh, assuring that each sample is on the correct manifold. And based on that one, you can actually have a very nice reconstruction for nonlinear bus problem. For example, this is a phase retrieval problem, standard algorithm or neural network approach didn't work, but our method has a very nice reconstruction and uh, the learning problem, the learning problem, or like a super resolution problem, 90% uh, of pixels are meeting, uh, missing, and all those kinds of problems in this DPS provide a much better solution. And I think I don't have enough time, right? So I can skip. 10 minutes left? Okay. Okay, and I can actually... Okay, I can go fast. So, another very nice ob observation is now diffusion model is quite universal. It can be used for various kinds of things using the same diffusion model. What do you mean by that? Here in this paper in the TMI this year, we actually dem uh, we demonstrate that diffusion model can be actually used for the denoising as well as the super resolution together. Now, usually the diffusion model starts with this complete noises. But you can see that this is actually about uh, uh, denoising is in between. So instead of starting from here, you start from somewhere in between by estimating noise level. And then you are also uh, incorporating the score, uh, uh, super resolution after denoising it and then alternating together. Then you can actually clearly see that the result from our method not only the improved the resolution, but also remove the uh, uh, noises as well. And also, if you actually see, though, as I mentioned before, you can actually easily see the uncertainty quantification as well. So by actually up, uh, applying the multiple reconstruction and calculating variance, you can see that the uncertainty maps are usually localized here because this is a patient uh, 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 the, uh, the liver disease. So because of that, there are a lot of actually the textures in this liver. So you can actually see the uncertainty maps in this area. 
Now the next question is, one of the actually the how how to accelerate? Because actually the even though I mentioned this nice thing about this, but we didn't actually mention that this is very time consuming. In fact, the reason for time consuming is we usually require the, the hundreds of even thousands of iterations for the reverse sample. So how to accelerate this? In our listen ICML paper this year, we actually address this problem in the generative model set, uh, set of as well, so what I call the denoising uh, Markov MCMC problem. Here the idea is following. Now, let's start with the one-dimensional kind of product density function. Let's think about the peak point here. And our goal is to generate the multiple samples here in this kind of distribution. But however, if we generate the sample from one this mode here, it's very difficult to generate the sample from the other mode. So, uh, so the reason that diffusion model works is now we actually add noise. As I mentioned, adding noise is basically uh, with the Gauss, uh, Gaussian smoothing. So we have a lot of noise in this mode that uh, incorporate together as a single mode. And then you go all the way up and then you can do the reverse sampling to achieve this one. So that's why, that's why this kind of diffusion mode that can generate multiple images from the multiple mode. But now if you actually think about this kind of diagram, you can easily see that you don't need this kind of thing at all. You can just, like if you want to generate another sample, you just add a small amount of noise and generate the sample. If you go furthermore, you add more noise and going in this way. So that means, in order to generate this sample in a much more time efficient manner, you need to actually think about the uh, concatenated the, uh, the product space for the original X as well as the uh, noise domain together, and then design a sampling stage here. So what I demonstrated is actually using some kinds of uh, details in the paper, we demonstrated you can actually alternate between this standard uh, uh, sampling procedure, alternate with the noise estimation together, we can actually generate the sampling pass in a, a much more efficient way. So using that one, you can actually have an even smaller number of the sample, you can generate high quality images. Okay, now what about the condition diffusion? You can, you can think about this one as in a similar manner. Of course, there are a lot of ways actually doing the acceleration by actually doing the high order uh, integration and etc. But here, as I mentioned before, this is more likely to optimize initialization. Same thing for the condition and diffusion cases, we can do the same kinds of ideas. Here, now if you think about the super resolution problems in here to here, now the question is during this part, it doesn't necessarily see any kind of thing. So is this part is really necessary? In fact, now instead of doing that, what about if I actually start with some additional noise here? And then if I actually start with the clean image and adding the noise, they look similar, right? So that means perhaps one intuitive way, other way of doing this one is, you just add noises and then do the reverse sampling along this way by adding the conditions, right? Yeah, it works, but the question is, why this is work? The reason is as follows. The reason we need to consider is, now, here at the beginning, there is differences. There is differences. But now, if you add noises here, the problem here is the difference between the two, because this is original differences and also two noise differences, this is bigger than this. So, that means even though we are doing the reverse sampling, there's no guarantee that the construction noise is smaller than the original one, right? But however, in our simple paper in the last year, we actually show that, in fact, this is really the case because, in fact, there is a short cut pass. That means now, uh, for any kind of noise reduction factor mu, there's always a minimum short cut pass and that this is actually the number of iteration and that actually satisfies this equation, reduce the noise length. Further, the most important part is this. Now this short cut pass become much shorter as starting noise level differences get small. That means if we start with this zero uh, initialization, the noise level is uh, the difference is very high, so you need a lot of sample. If you start with the one step denoising, one step initialization, uh, 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 input images, then it's smaller, so you may have a smaller number of reverse sampling. But perhaps if you have a fifth point neural network, it's a better estimation. 
And then you have a much more smaller nodes, yeah? so your uh, reduction can be much faster. So in fact, the reason that this is this is a case is this is so-called a stochastic contraction property. In fact, what it demonstrates is reverse diffusion is contracting with this contracting factor of lambda here. This contracting factor of lambda is you can actually show that always less than one for the DDPM, SLMD, and DDIN cases. So that means we can always find the node schedule and shortcut path such that we can actually reduce the uh, uh, reconstruction node. This is some of the result. Using only 20 sam uh, step sample, we can actually have a much more clean images in our method compared to all other baseline here. Same thing in, in painting problem, using the 20 sample, we can actually have a much more clean sample. Okay, I have only two minutes left, so I give you yeah, quickly some of the interesting, uh, uh, some of the another uh, topics uh, uh, we are doing, this is blind diffusion mode. Now, usually we mentioned that this is actually the uh, A is known, but what if this is unknown? For example, blind deconvolution problem, this block corner is unknown in these cases as well. Then what should we do? In fact, what you can demonstrate is, in, you can actually think about the uh, uh, diffusion model for the corners as well. So we can actually do the image prior and the corner prior, and then using the uh, three uh, using the scope function estimation for the corners as well. But corner estimation very simple because this is very small size image. So do the DPS sampling for the uh, images and corner alternatively. So that means now from the images we actually do the three D formula to estimate the clean images and. Uh, the corner, noise corner, estimate the intermediate clean images and see the differences and the back propagating. Yeah? And you can actually add these differences to the during the sampling procedure for the X and corner as well. And you can clearly see that, that this blind blurring from the measurement, uh, our result of estimation of the corner and, the, uh, is, and also uh, underlying image is quite impressive compared to uh, the original one. Same thing, this turbulence problem, we are from this measurement, we can actually clearly remove the images. Okay, now, actually, I give you actually the, I was, uh, yeah, I, I use two more uh, minutes because actually there is a very recent work we are actually currently working about the 3D inverse problem. Now, if you think about the 3D inverse problem, that's actually very important for the three dimension uh, medical imaging as well. But if you think about directly applying the diffusion model for the three D problem, three D problem, then it's it's very difficult to train because three D volume scale, uh, score function for the three D image is very very difficult to train. You need a lot of sample. So uh, we can actually think about we can actually skip this one, and now. This is our listen paper in ICCB this year. What it should uh, show is now as a very interesting decomposition. It's a separable decomposition. Although this model is not gen may not be general, but still it works in practice. That means we actually show, uh, demonstrate that this two dim uh, three dimensional diffusion can be decomposed of the x y direction diffusion and YZ direction diffusion. And if you do the uh, train the two two-dimensional diffusion model for the XY and YZ, and then alternating together during the sampling, amazingly, it works very well. For example, this is actually the result. For, for example, this is for the image generation, not an image inverse problem. Even in the image generation of the three dimensions and the volume, by alternating two, dim uh, two diffusion model in the XY direction, and why is it direction? You can generate the whole 3D volume. And furthermore, you can actually use that one for the, for example, slice, level, uh, directional, superposition problem as well. So you can actually clearly see this uh, uh, five times superposition problem. You have a much accurate construction result, and uh, which is very close to the reference image. I think time's up, so I think I need to close up here. Okay, thank you very much uh, uh, for your attention. And I'd be happy to take any questions.
Is this open? Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ye, for presenting such a great talk. Really, so many works to share with the audience here. And I, I, we are kind of like um, beyond our schedule time, but I think we can still have like several minutes for have the Q&A session. Is there any question from the audience here? Yeah, maybe I can ask a quick question. So as you can see, like uh, your group have done a lot of like many interesting works, including the DPS, MCG, and also you introduced like the acceleration, acceleration of the sampling. I wonder in that, what kind of the aspects do you think is, is the most important question or the biggest challenges we're facing here? And what do you think maybe some like valuable direction that we should pay more efforts to talk or investigate further? Okay, that's a very excellent question. Actually, that's one of the things I'm thinking about nowadays, actually. And in fact, actually, yeah, uh, one of the actually very important aspects of remaining class open problem is, of course, about acceleration. Still, even though we discuss about a lot of acceleration techniques, but if you just apply this one, if you're interested in the real application, in the real clinical scenario, still, there are a lot of... Uh, uh, the delays of the reconstruction time compared to other, for example, supervised learning approaches. Okay, so in that aspect, like uh, for example, acceleration based on some kinds of deceleration, maybe that might be an interesting direction to pursue. And also, that's actually one important part. <laughs> and so, another important question <laughs> is actually so we discussed about the blind diffusion for the case of the corner-based convolutions, okay? However, in many of the inverse problem in medical application, sometimes forward model itself is not known. In that case, previously, I will try to use like a psychic type of approach to estimate the forward model as well as the inverse mappings as well. But now for the diffusion cases, uh, that is not that straightforward because actually estimating both forward and reverse sampling is not straightforward. In fact, actually, there is a we have a we have been working on like a uh, yeah that that problem is directly related to Schrodinger bridge problem. So we our group is actually working on those kind of issues to address this issue. But still, that part of the uh, 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 problem is not complete solved, so there is many interesting things to remain, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, that's a very interesting paper I just uh, also look into. And uh, there is another question from our audience, our Jeff here. Yeah. Hi, John. So, uh, oh, that doesn't work? Ah, how about now? Can you okay. hear me? Can you hear me, John? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, Thanks yeah. for the terrific talk. Uh, your your perpendicular models are very interesting. Have you looked at using two one-dimensional perpendicular models for modeling 2D images? And I point out that's kind of like a patch, where the patches are one by n and n by one. So have you looked at that? Oh, that's a very interesting question. We haven't talked. We haven't thought about that one. Uh, yeah, maybe it is also right to investigate. Yeah, okay. I look forward maybe. to hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, Dr. Ye. I, we really appreciate your joining us in such a late term. And yeah, for the next one, we'll get into our uh, speaker, the Professor Udubek uh, Kamila from the Washington University in St. Louis, and focus on the topic of the probabilistic diffusion framework for limited angle CT reconstruction. And this will be our last talk in the morning session, and then we will have the lunch break.